Once again, good morning, Trinity, online worship, live. It's good to see all of you. I wish I could see all of you. The ones who are posting with a comment, I can actually see little bitty icons in the corner of the screen. So uh, I'm happy to see Joyce and Kathy Miller and Dia Miller. And I think I saw uh, Ashley and Michelle also on. Uh, if you'll post that, uh, then uh, I can at least see that you are here. And it's good to be here on this Palm Sunday. Our custom on Palm Sunday is usually to process with palm branches, which we do not have this year. And our custom is also to begin the Palm Sunday Gospel reading at the beginning of the worship service and then go into a processional hymn. Hear these words then from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1, 21, I'm sorry, chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village ahead of you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, just say this. The Lord needs them. And they will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed the one who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil asking, who is this? The crowds saying, this is the prophet Jesus of Nazareth in Galilee. Well, for our announcements today, uh, please, I hope you got the email or either regular mail this past Thursday or Friday, if it's regular mail, that should have had in it our announcements for the week and everything that's coming up. So if you did not get that, please send a message. Text me would be the best way to do that. 
and we can make sure you get those for the coming weeks and the weeks ahead. Some of those announcements include some things that are very important for the coming weeks. Right now, we still don't know where we're going to be broadcasting from on Easter, but it's probably going to have to be in the sanctuary simply because this is where we have Wi-Fi, and the Wi-Fi at our house is not nearly as um, consistent and stable. So my guess is we're going to be broadcasting from here next Sunday on Easter morning. We're also doing a Monday-Thursday service. I'm not sure where that's going to be yet, but we will be doing a Monday Thursday service at 7 o'clock this coming Thursday evening, and we'll be doing that live on the same Trinity UCC Facebook channel. I do want to let you know that this past week on our Trinity Community Corner Facebook group, I did ask for people to send in photos of themselves because I think it would be great if we could put together a slideshow presentation, at least for next Sunday, where we can actually see each other's faces and be together that way, if possible, at least, so that we can know everybody's okay. So please, if you have photos or you can send photos, you can actually post them to the community Facebook page and give permission for me to pull them off, and we can put them together that way. I uh, will report to you that there is uh, a sad announcement that I need to make today, and that is that our pancake breakfast will be canceled this month, as will our community dinner. We are just in a place and time where it's no longer safe to bring people together in that way, which is very sad to me. We do still have some people putting items in the community pantry, and that brings us to the moment of gratitude this week for all those who have helped stock the community pantry this week. Folks are in great need still. I was by this week and put a few things in. I think Ashley Crosby also did that. I know Dan Hardy did, and Ken Swoop really filled it up on, I think it was Thursday or Friday, and thank you all of you for continuing to do that. I'll put some water in today before I leave, and if you do put some items in, if you'll post that on one of our Facebook pages, just so, and it's just so we'll know, take a picture of it, just so we'll know when it's filled and, and what's in it and, and what else needs to be added. Thank you, all of you. I think uh, Tricia also, Tricia Wynn also put some stuff in. So just thank you for those. The people are really in need. Rarely do we, the, does the food and items stay in there more than just an hour or two. So if you can help with that, please, and if, and if you need someone to pick up groceries for you to do that, we'll be happy to do that as well. I don't think there are other announcements I have at this point. I will tell you that we are still pondering whether and how we can do worship by Zoom. If you don't already have that, you should probably get it. And uh, I, do, I did find out this past week that we can also do it with Zoom and broadcast it live on our Facebook page. So that may be where we're headed soon with that. There's also been some question about whether we can do virtual choirs that way. And Teresa is looking into that. I do need you to know that there are some issues with being able to broadcast this live because it is recorded. And so we can only use music for services that we have permission to do that with. So please know that there are some issues with that that we're trying to work out. We do have a license for some music, but we don't have a license for all pieces of music. So uh, we're limited a little bit right now in what we can broadcast because this is also a video when we do this. Anything else I need to cover on that, Teresa, or is that enough for now? Okay, that's good for now, she says. Our beginning song, our gathering song, actually, uh, along that same line, is a song that Teresa wrote this past week for this purpose so that we could broadcast it and also video it. So thank you for your 
a contribution to our worship service in that way today, Teresa. Um, also, another song that we're using uh, after the sermon today which is uh, uh, Love That Heals the World is also another song that uh, we put together a little while back. So this is Hosanna, and I think you'll pick up on it. We're going to sing it, and once you pick up on it, you can sing it along with us, I hope. Our responsive intent today I hope you have the worship order in front of you it is on our website at commachurch.com forward slash o f w that's for order for worship you can still find that now if you go to that page and you can follow along in our worship service today this responsive intent includes children and also teens but we're just going to make everybody that for now. So you are younger than you thought you were. Tell them that I need it, says the Christ. I need humble ones to carry my life, to bring hope to the people. Who will carry the Christ today? We will be love. Who will bring hope to the people? We will be love. Stay beside me now as I travel, for tomorrow the way may not be so welcoming. We will be love. And now there is a music special.
Thank you for that beautiful, beautiful hymn. So this past week I've been thinking, well, first of all, on Facebook this past week, I've been on Facebook a lot more than I normally am. I have been on Facebook a lot over the last month now. And I've also been on the computer a lot more than I ever imagined I would have to be. I know some of you can uh, probably commiserate with me on that. It seems like uh, Teresa and I both are just constantly online. Either she's doing lessons or we're working together to figure out how we're going to do uh, worship or stay in touch with people. And uh, that has been quite stressful for many people that kind of working from home. On the one hand, there's some great benefits, but on, a, on the other hand, not so much sometimes. Uh, but one of the sort of highlights of that is I see people on Facebook a lot more, so I get to see some of you. And this past week, someone posted the post about show yourself as a, as a child and also today, or you know, much younger and also today. And what I notice most, or a lot of times what I notice most there are the similarities. The people, you can still see facial features, the, the, everything, you know, it just looks like an adult version of the same person. 
But other times, what I notice, even in the same photo, are the differences or the contrasts. And lately, I've been thinking a lot about the contrasts. What I notice most about the time in which we now live through this pandemic that we, in which we find ourselves are the contrast. Contrasting, I find myself doing this, maybe you do too, contrasting the way things used to be and the way things are now. The way things used to be even as recently as, what, four or five weeks ago and the way things are now. We have completely changed the way we do things. Everything we do, we have changed. Four weeks ago today, actually a little more than that now, about five weeks ago today, we were planning to do worship in our sanctuary and have people be here. That was for March 7th. As you know, we ended up not doing that, not having people come to church. And it was a wise thing to do. I also found myself in preparation for today contrasting, of course, this Palm Sunday with all the other Palm Sundays I've ever known. In fact, I find myself contrasting every Sunday now with all the other Sundays except for the last four that I have ever known. Usually with Palm Sunday, we process with palm leaves waving and palm branches waving and festal music and there's a congregational singing. We read the scripture as we did today of Jesus entering Jerusalem on the foal of a donkey with all the crowds in the parade and all the gatherings that we normally do. It reminds me that just the story itself reminds me of the way we used to do things. Together, gathered together, in crowd, in places all over our world. This year is such a contrast to all the other years we have known. So my question today is, what if we listen to all these many present contrasts with the way things were just a few weeks ago? What if we listen to all these contrasts in our lives right now? And what are they trying to tell us? I think one thing might be that we don't have to do things the way we used to do things. So there is something freeing about that. We can do things differently. We are doing things differently. We probably didn't even know that we could do church this differently. Because as most all of you know, the famous seven last words of the church are, we never did it that way before. Well, guess what? We just threw that one out the window about five weeks ago. You can't even, don't even imagine that anymore because now we're doing things way different than we ever imagined we could. So I find some, I find some hope in that. I find some comfort also in that we are doing things differently than we used to. I don't, and you know, we aren't even thinking about one of the freeing things about this. We, we aren't even having to think about whether we're being successful or not. We're just trying to be faithful. And I think we're doing that together, even as we are separated, even as we are isolated, we are still being faithful together. One of the contrasts uh, I also notice, and one of the contrasts that I am noticing in this is just how difficult those we love most can be to, hmm, how should I say this? 
just how difficult those we love most can be to live with sometimes. Teresa just bowed up at me. Good thing she's got a mask on. She, <laughs> she's wearing a mask. You might have encountered that. What I'm noticing is that it, it's more me. It's me that is difficult to live with. It's difficult to be isolated. More stress comes in when we don't have places to go. But you know what else happens? We learn about each other, things we didn't know. And we learn to talk to each other in ways we didn't think we could. And we learn to communicate in better ways, in clearer ways. And our relationship becomes stronger because of that. I hope those contrasts are also telling us just how loving and gentle and understanding and kind those same people we live with are. Because they are the ones taking care of us also. So those are some good contrasts and some difficult contrasts that I see in our world right now. It's easy to see the big picture, though, sometimes. We look at the generalizations out there and, and, and recognize that we're all in this sort of the same boat. We can recognize our similarities. We recognize that we have some of the same things going on in our lives right now. We are dealing with the same grief of the way things used to be. Grief for our school children who don't have that connection right now who, and who desperately need it. Grief for our teachers who also have had to learn new things in new ways and do it quickly and try to be effective at it. One of the things these kinds of contrasts are saying to me is that we really need face-to-face -face contact. We really need to be able to see each other and be with each other. And we're in a similar place, all of us, with regard to those needs. But Palm Sunday, Palm Sunday, is really more about the contrasts than it is the similarities. Palm Sunday, perhaps more than any other Sunday in the year, is a day of recognizing the differences. The differences between Jesus and the others around him. The contrast present between Jesus and other religious people of his day. There was a big difference. The contrast between Jesus and other leaders and kings of his day. There was a huge contrast. As Jesus comes in on this, actually the foal of a donkey. While on the other side of Jerusalem comes in the political leader on a great steed with armies. To control the crowds because after all it's the high holy holidays in Jerusalem during this time of year that year. Jesus comes in to the shouts of a crowd who have gathered spontaneously and later the crowds will be gathered to convict him not so spontaneously but plotted and planned. Jesus comes in in the humility of a servant Whereas the others in our world come in with the arrogance and hubris they believe is necessary to control the crowds. There are also contrasts between Jesus and those who were his own followers. Some of them had different ideas about who Jesus was and what he needed to be doing. Judas is an example of that. And by the end of the week, Judas will have sold him out, either because 
Judas really had his hands on the money and that was what was important to him or because he really wanted to force Jesus' hand to become the military leader they were expecting, which is quite another contrast here between Jesus and the people and his followers is their expectations. You see, Jesus expected people to love each other. Jesus expected people to be kind and gentle with one another. Jesus expected people to work together for the good of all. And that's a big contrast with a lot of things in our world right now. As it was between he and his disciples as well as some of his family. Maybe the most stark contrast we see in this story as it goes forward is that by the end of the week, they will all have deserted him. Quite a contrast to giving one's whole life and self for the cause of love and justice for the least of these. There is the contrast. And I think that same contrast is present today with us. The way, the contrast between the way of love and justice versus the way of competition and corruption. I know you're going to say, oh, competition is good. I've heard that so many times. It's good for a capitalistic economy. Maybe. Some people even think competition between churches is good. I have just never had a taste for that. One of the other contrasts we see this year pretty vividly, those who follow sports, is their earning. <laughs> Which is maybe one of the most ama amazing things about this whole process is we did not think we could live without basketball and March Madness. We didn't think we could live without NBA basketball or Major League Baseball, and yet, here we are. None of those things happening in our world right now. And guess what? We're living through that. I wonder what else we think we can't live without. Maybe we think we can't live without the cutthroat competition of capitalism. Maybe we think we can't live without the psychological manipulation of our marketing enterprise. My guess is, if push came to shove, as it has for so many other things right now, we would find a way to let that go too. And to the degree that we're able to find that contrast, to identify that contrast and let it go, we'll be much closer to following the contrasting way of Christ in our world. When the way of love seems so hard to follow, when getting the best of someone feels so satisfying, when the choice to throw ethics out the window is all too easy and walking the lonesome road of justice for the poor and marginalized and forgotten heroes of this pandemic. is just overlooked. Let's remember them. Let's remember the contrasting way of Christ in this world. And let's remember those who are putting food on our tables right now. Let's remember those with reverence who are working in our hospitals and medical care fields right now, who are on the front lines, many of them uncovered. Let's remember grocery store managers like Ken Swoop and the people behind those counters who are checking us out or making sure the aisles are stocked and the people driving those trucks to make sure we can still eat in all of our isolation. Let's remember those teachers and students at home struggling in such a contrast to the way they've done things before to learn and to stay connected and to grow. 
Let's remember, we're going to do communion in just a moment. We're going to serve communion. You're going to have to serve yourself. So go ahead and get that, get your bread ready and get your cup ready. It's sort of BYOB communion today, right, Tom? <laughs> when we participate in this holy communion, this meal, we remember in this bread the brokenness of our world. We remember the contrasts. And when we participate in the drinking of this cup together, we remember it as being able to live through what we didn't think we could. We remember it as new life, and we take it that way. Let's remember with our piece of bread like we never have before, and with this cup like we've never drunk before, the new life that Jesus walked that road before us. And let us remember like we never have before with this bread and cup let us remember that Christ is still the way we are following and it will always be a way of contrast to much of what we know. And let us celebrate that that is so in this holy meal together today. Let us recognize those contrasts and let us celebrate what we learn about each other in them, in our isolation. Let us celebrate the people we are with and love and who love us deeply and carry us through this time. In Christ, amen. Our responsive hymn, some of you may know this, is Love That Heals the World. Uh, it's a song that um, I'm not boasting, but I will tell you that uh, actually this was a song I wrote uh, a couple of years ago for a uh, Charlotte Pride interfaith worship service and that our choir sang and that Teresa put the music to. So it's still a collaborative effort and it's also one that we can actually do in video because we have permission to do that. So uh, this is the love that heals the world. And so as we sing this together, know that the love that heals the world is always going to be a contrast to a lot of what else is going on in our world. We are the face of love. You are the face of love. We are the face of love. Love that heals the world. We are the face that heals the world. 
prayer time and I have a number of those listed that is also in the worship doc if you go to commonchurch.com forward slash OFW which stands for order for worship you can find those each week you can still see those prayer requests and you should also be getting those in your email if you want to list a prayer request right now I'm getting a little better at paying attention to what the comments are so if you want to send those prayer requests I'll try to name them now and I'm getting as I said I'm getting a little better at that so I do want to remember Karen Kester Teresa's sister who had a fall a week or so ago and uh, fractured her wrist also um, Fred a friend of Tom and Ann Leip we continue to remember um, Wendy Columbus cousin Barbara Goleski in our prayers uh, who is hospitalized right now and uh, I think has also had some mini strokes so please uh, remember her I'm also going to have to move closer to the camera I see Florian Simmer hey we have people watching from Germany hey Florian um, for the captain of the aircraft carrier yes USS Theodore Roosevelt um, yeah, who stood up for the people on his ship and lost his job because of it. Thank you for uh, reminding us and remembering him, Florian. Also, uh, families who are experiencing grief right now, and that's uh, the Rummage family still. And also, um, uh, the family of Colin Eagle, Bobby Eagle, remember him. Uh, Lisa Guetta, which is a friend of Kathy and Regina's and also uh, uh, one of two people in a couple that I performed a wedding for gosh back in October of 2014 I think it was when marriage equality came to North Carolina Lisa and uh, Robin let's also remember uh, Boyd Lyerly a friend of Joanna Cups uh, Tina Pritchard, who continues to recover at home, Ollie Pascal, Sandra Smith, Rebecca Howard, John Mooney. Uh, I see Sadie Greenwich is posting my father, Jack Crabtree, who is going uh, through chemo, chemo. Yes, thank you, Sadie. Um, also, Sarah Truel, Eric Sandberg, continuing to recover from the stem cell transplant. Uh, also, Angie Slater, Doris Wilson, Rick Carter, um, Kyle Roweeder, uh, Denise Robertson, and also Ann, a friend of Ashley's. Of course, teachers and students and frontline workers we continue to remember, and as I said earlier, grocery store managers and people in grocery stores who were trying to take care of people by making sure they have food available. Um, if there are others, you can post those, and I'll try to mention those before we leave today. Uh, but thank you for doing that. How would I do? Am I a little better at paying attention to what's on the screen now? Also, celebrations coming up in April. Uh, Ron and Mike Shemansky have an anniversary coming up. That's today, actually, the 5th of April. Congratulations to you two and happy anniversary. <laughs> and also, a birthday coming up on the 9th this week of George Malcolm Illick Taylor. Happy birthday to you, George. Are there others? I don't know of others. Yvonne is watching. Okay. Our special ed teacher. Our special ed teacher. Yes, indeed. Uh, special education students. Uh, 
and families. And you know, it occurred to me uh, when Wendy posted this past week about uh, her struggles with all this and the difficulties of teaching this way, um, it really sort of drove things home for me about just how difficult all this is for people. And I'm sure that teachers are seeing kids in their homes and that's probably a different experience than you've had before. And, you know, homes are places where there are systems that in place. And sometimes those systems are hard for kids and for adults. So re let's remember those people who feel like they're sort of in a pressurized place right now. And ask for God's healing love and comfort and peace to be with them. Let us pray together. God, thank you for this time together, for this space such as it is, Lord. It feels weird coming into church and not seeing people. I remember it, it feels weird not to be here and have Joanne knocking on my door to set up sound and then Lonnie later taking care of people coming in and making sure the candles are lit and or that we have an acolyte at not seeing Bob sitting over here doing the PowerPoint or the choir assembling or all of you in our congregation coming together and smiling at each other and hugging each other and singing together what grief we experience. Oh God, through this, be with us. Bring comfort and peace to our weary and grief-stricken souls not just us, but all of us. Be with us, O oh God, as we are reminded of what we miss right now, like Bobby Bonds and his chocolate chip cookies, and his smile and greeting, and preparing the coffee for the Sunday school class. Oh, and the cleaners who come in on Mondays, Dan, Earl, who we also name for prayer and recovery from surgery, and Lonnie and Joanne. Oh God, thank you for all these people that we miss so much, all of our congregation. Be with them, be with us as we struggle through this contrasting way of being in this world. Bring us comfort and peace. Bring us healing, oh God. Bring us the skills we need so desperately, so quickly to find the wherewithal, the what is needed in our souls, in our faith, in our trust to go forth. God, what I want people to know right now is that you're doing great at what it is you're doing because you've never had to do this before. And you're doing it better than anyone else ever could. So thank you all for all you're doing. Every place you're doing it. Hear our prayers, oh God. Hear the prayers from this painful place. Hear our prayers, oh God, from this creative place. Hear our prayers from this lonely, isolated place. Hear our prayers for celebration as we celebrate those around us who love us and care for us. We celebrate with Mike and Ron their anniversary and also with George their birthday. Thank you, God, for celebrations in our lives right now and help us not to miss those. Hear our prayers for grace and mercy and peace in our world. Hear our prayers, O oh God, for carrying the love of Christ in our world in contrast to all that might be around us. And hear us now as we pray, as Christ has taught us, our mother, father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to take one more look. Uh, Bill Stanley, or Jim says, yes, right, Carol Stanley fails. She's doing okay. 
and uh, so we remember them also in our prayers as well. It is time now for us to receive our offering, uh, so you can go to securely give your offering at paypal.me forward slash comma church. That's paypal.me forward slash comma c-o-m-m-a c-h-u-r-c-8 comma church. And you can click your offering. Remember that those offerings are needed. Your donations are, are helpful and needed regardless of what amount it is. So you can continue to participate in worship with your gifts and offerings that way. Our offering will now be clicked.
Thank you, Tom Light. give thanks for these gifts, O God. We ask your blessings on all those who've given. More so, O God, we ask your blessings on these gifts that they might do the work of ministry in this world, in this community, in this church. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I invite you now to the table of Holy Communion. The prophets foretold it, the desert burst into bloom, angelic messengers delivered the news. A priest lost his speech, a young woman found her voice. An innkeeper found room in a stable as well as in his heart, and wise ones brought gifts. On this day, the scriptures revive old stories and bring new understandings. In the face of critics and skeptics, our faith cries out, resilient, like a baby from a manger bed, like a child in a house. From that Bethlehem beginning, Jesus baptized in the Jordan, spent his life serving others, that all might know the compassionate attention of a loving God. Today, Jesus serves us yet again as we gather at this table prepared for us. Let us pray together. Dear Jesus of Advent, Christmas, Epiphany and Lent, you remain a sacred mystery to us. You have brought good news for all the people, and we are here, for you are here. We are hungry for your love, which surpasses all our understanding. We are thirsty for your spirit that never runs dry. In this meal, nourish our souls, feed our minds, quench our deepest longings, and forgive our transgressions that we may glorify you every day of our lives. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, as you moved over the face of the deep, move over us in these gifts of bread and this cup, in this place and in all the places that we now are, in our homes and other places, Move over these gifts, O oh God. Consecrate them that they may become new life for us and for all the world. Amen. Now, if you'll take your piece of bread and break it. The bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ, is the brokenness of the body of Jesus. It is the brokenness of our world, and we know there's a lot of brokenness right now in our world. It's your own brokenness and mine. Wherever there is brokenness, this bread is that brokenness. And the cup of blessing which we bless is the new life Christ gives. It is the repair of the world and the restoration of new life. In it, we drink the wholeness of the whole world, even in our isolation, even in this contrasting time, especially in this time. We remember brokenness 
and drink the new life in our lives made whole. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for all is now ready. And I invite you to eat your bread and drink your cup. body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ, new life Christ gives. Amen. I invite you now to join me for the prayer of thanksgiving that is in your worship. <laughs> 